Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> I got enough to buy one more drink, Miss Kitty. You shouldn't spend all your money on me, mister. Mister? <laughs> well, listen to that. What? Ain't nobody called me mister in my whole life. How old are you, Billy? Twenty-one. Uh-huh. Oh, it's true. Well, anyway, you're old enough to be called mister. Golly, you, you sure make a man feel good, Miss Kitty. Thank you, Billy. But you pick up that money now. You've had enough to drink for one night. Oh, a couple of beers. Save it for breakfast, Billy. You'll be glad I made you. Now you ain't treating me like a man, Miss Kitty. <laughs> There's no reason why she should, kid. Kitty, huh? Now you won't have no trouble treating me like a man, Kitty. Beat it, stranger. What are you horning in here for? Go on home to bed, kid. Let's you and me sit down somewhere, Kitty. Talk it over a little. You wouldn't feel at home, stranger. Huh? There's no hogwaller for you to sit in around here. People don't talk to Joe Delk like that. Then Joe Delk had better go back to wherever it is he's got people afraid of him. Not here, mister. Not in Dodge. Don't be afraid of me in Dodge. You just don't know I'm here yet. <laughs> well, why don't you go let him know and leave us alone? She's asking you, mister. I'm telling him. You heard her. I'll take care of you in a minute, kitty. As soon as I get this little blow fly off my neck. Yeah. This your money, kid? You leave that alone. Go on, go pick it up before you get into real trouble. I'll kill you for that. No, Ooh. Billy, he's a gunman. Can't you tell? I don't care what he is. You killed him. He was only a kid. I wouldn't care if he was a grown man. He didn't have a chance against a professional like you. Nobody I've ever met has. But now people begin to know Joe Delk's in town. I never heard of Joe Delk. Well, maybe not, mister, but you've seen what he can do. I didn't see it. Matt, that poor kid. I don't even know his last name. What happened, Kitty? Well, I'll tell you what happened, mister. He got to crowd me, same as you're doing right now. This is Marshal Dillon you're talking to. Oh, Marshal Dillon, eh? Well, I don't mind eating the Marshal now and then. Did he murder the boy, Kitty? No, he didn't, Matt. Kid drew first. Yeah. Must have been easy for you, Delk. Real easy, Marshal. It was kind of fun. Fun? Killing that nice boy, fun? Ah, taking my time that way. What are you doing? Give me my gun. You're not going to be needing a gun, Delk. Expected that, did he? No gunman would, Kitty. But he's sure never gonna forget it. (laughs) 
Introducing one of the country's best-known jazz musicians and arrangers, Mr. Bobby Haggard. How about whistling along with him? Packs more pleasure. Packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Chester. I let Del carve his cage. He ain't none too spry this morning. What do you expect me to do, you holding a shotgun on me? How you feeling, Doc? Outside of your pride being hurt, I mean. You know, I think of a man who fights with his hands, Marshal. I don't care what you think about anything. He's a coward. That's what he is. It took you by surprise, didn't it? Of course it did. And I hurt you, too, didn't it, Doc? Hurt you pretty bad. You wouldn't want to go through that again, would you? No. No, I wouldn't. Because I'd kick you half to death next time. Now, what are you doing in Dodge, anyway? I'm coming on this Santa Fe. I said, what are you doing Look, here? Look, Marshal, just because I had to shoot a man in self-defense... Boy! He had a gun, didn't he? Against you, he might as well have had a stick. It was still self-defense. <laughs> your gun belt. You turning me loose? Put it on. Okay. Now, I can't reach you from here with my fists, Doc. chance you took, Mr. Dillon. I mean, you might have had to shoot him. I was pretty sure he wouldn't draw, Chester. Well, why? The beating I gave him last night. That takes the vinegar out of a man like Doak. Kind of scares him. You mean that's why he just walked out of here? And it could be one reason. One reason? Yeah, maybe he's got something in mind. Like what? Like finding me when I'm not ready for him. They're putting himself behind a shotgun. They're shooting me in the back. Doc never got hurt that way before. It rattled him some. But he's not through. Not yet. Can I borrow your spoon to stir my coffee, Mr. Oh, sure, Kitty. Yes. Here, here. You'd think this restaurant could afford more than one spoon to two customers. <laughs> well, if they did, they couldn't afford the quality beef they serve. <laughs> then I won't complain. I'd hate to think of eating any lower off one of those animals. <laughs> you know something, Kitty? Huh? Before long, some bright fellow's going to get the idea of raising cattle in one small area where they can live peaceful and grow fat and juicy. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea, Matt. Why don't you start it? No, I got a job. Oh, sure, I forgot. After all, a job with a future like yours. Oh, oh no, I can't. I can see uh... your gravestone. He didn't die rich, but he sure died stubborn. <laughs> I like that. I think I'll use it. You won't be there. Well, maybe you'll take care of it for me, huh? 
Having dinner with you is real pleasurable, Matt. Well, I thank you, Kitty. Don't mention it. Mr. Dillon. Hello, Miss Kitty. You sit down, Chester. Have some coffee with us. We ain't got time, Miss Kitty. Doc's going to be waiting outside any minute. Doc? He wants you to go over to the Dodge house with him, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what for? To see Joe Delk. Don't tell me somebody's finally shot that ape. No, it ain't that. He was over the Texas Trail drinking all day yesterday. He sent word to Doc he's sober now, but he's got the shakes and needs something to fix him up. A wolf poison might help. Oh, why does Doc want me along, Chester? Maybe he don't trust old Delk. Anyway, he says he won't go see him alone. Yeah, well, maybe he's right. I never heard of a gunman fool enough to drink so much he got the shakes, man. No, neither did I, Kitty. Maybe it ain't even true, Mr. Dillon. Maybe he's got something fancy in mind, like you said. Yeah, maybe. You wait down here, Chester. Yes, sir. Huh? What'd the clerk say, Matt? Uh, top of the stairs, the fifth room on the left. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if he's recovered by now. No, what do you mean? Yeah, it's been two or three hours since he sent for me. I didn't think he had hurt him to live with his misery a while. Yeah, if there was anything wrong with him at all. No, I heard he'd been drinking yesterday. Jim Buck said he saw him over there. A man can make a show of drinking and still be sober, Doc. If he's got a reason. Yeah. Hey, sh- wait a minute. Wait. This is the room. Wait a minute. Listen. Somebody's in there with her. No. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Matt, it's locked. It's not out of the way, Doc. No. No. Don't hit me, Marshal. Don't hit me. Why, he's asleep, Matt. He's dreaming. Yeah. Hey, Delk. Delk. Come on, wake up. Delk, come on. Marshal, what are you doing here? Who's he? Well, I'm Doc Adams. You're awake now, Delk. You were having a nightmare. Yeah. I was dreaming. Where you been? I sent for you hours ago. What'd you bring the marshal for? What in the world is going on here, Mr. Jones? It's all right, Chester. Del got a little mixed up. He started seeing things. Yeah, he's he dreaming. A man like you can't afford to dream like that, Del. He can't afford to get as jumpy as you are. Doc, uh, give me something. Uh, give me something to take. Yes, all right. I've got some pills here somewhere. If I can just find them now. Yes, yes, but these pills won't do you as much good as about a gallon of coffee well. What are you staring at me for, Marshal? Just taking a last look, Delk. What do you mean? Two hours from now, I don't want you anywhere near Dodge. I ain't done nothing. You're all through, Delk. Your gun's no use to you anymore. You're afraid. I had a bad dream. That don't mean nothing. You got two hours, Delk. Go get killed someplace else. I don't want to watch it. Are you listening to Gunsmoke in your favorite easy chair or out driving? Oh, there you are, in the kitchen. Say, you want to make whatever you're doing more enjoyable? Have a Chesterfield. Enjoy Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. A more perfectly packed cigarette gives you an open, easy draw that unlocks all the better taste and mildness of fine tobaccos. And Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, is more perfectly packed, with an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Remember, to the touch, to the taste... Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most.
I should not even be in here, Mr. Dillon. Oh, why not, Chester? Well, I'm broke. Well, the beer's on me. Oh, well, now, I surely do thank you, Mr. Dillon. I'm plum grateful. I truly am plum grateful, (laughs) too. I only figured on buying you one, Chester. Oh. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. I see him. I think he's still got an hour. Who that fellow he's talking to? Uh, Some drifter, I guess. I'll uh, buy you a drink, mister. No, I ain't drinking no more. I only come in for one. I said I'd buy you a drink. Uh, sorry, stranger. One all I can take. I did my drinking yesterday. I don't like it much when a man's downright unfriendly. Well, some other time, mister. I could take it. You think you're too good to drink with me. Oh, that ain't what I'm saying, I told you why. You'll uh, drink with me? No. No, I can't. All right. You're wearing a gun. No. What you doing? All right, hold it, mister. Marshal, step back, Dulk. What are you interfering for? Did you ever hear of Joe Dulk? What's he got to do with this? Uh, you were about to fight him. Joe Dulk? <laughs> nah. That couldn't be him. Oh, no, why not? Dulk wouldn't take that kind of talk. He'd have killed me right off. Now, you're just lucky, mister. You really Joe Delk, mister? I am. Look, I didn't mean nothing. I I didn't know. I gotta be going anyway. Well, Delk? Hey... It ain't two hours, Marshal. I said I didn't want to watch you get killed here. You go find yourself a horse. I'll be at my office for 30 minutes, then I'm going to come looking for you. The 30 minutes is up, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. You reckon he's left? I hope so, Chester. I feel kind of sorry for him. Do you? It's him. Now, just take it easy, Marshal. I ain't looking for trouble. I... I want to talk to you. All right, talk. You seen it? That fellow over at the saloon? Yeah, what about him? I backed down, Marshal. I was afraid of him. Don't you understand that? He was no gunman. Of course he would. Something's wrong with me, Marshal. Ever since that beating you gave me. What did you want to see me about, Doc? You gotta help me. Help you? you know, I'm I'm gonna, gonna take my gun off. I'm through gunfighting, but you gotta protect me. You gotta do it, Marshal. I'm sorry, Doc. There's nothing I can do. For I'll you. get killed. There's men all over looking to kill me. You should have thought about that a long time well, ago. Let me, let me stay here, Marshal. You tell everybody to leave me alone. I'll die if you don't. Doc, let me ask you something. How many men have you killed in your time? I don't know a lot of them. What difference is How many it? like that boy you shot down the other night? You're against me. You ain't gonna help me. No, I'm not gonna help you. You're a killer, Doc. You're nothing but a murderer. All right. I'll go. I don't know where, but I'll go. Wait a minute, Doc. Did you ever hear that saying about how a man who lives by the sword dies by the sword? Yeah. I heard that somewhere. Well, it's true, you know. I guess it's going to be true for me. Yeah. You know something, Marshal? What? 
I can't think of no reason why someday he ain't going to be true for you. moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips, Chesterfield, mild. Yet they satisfy the most. You know, people on the frontier look down on a buffalo skinner. They referred to him as a stinker, and they avoided him. But next week, one of these outcasts wins the respect of the whole of Dodge. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Sam Edwards, and Clayton Post. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Smokers, this is it. L and M filters. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day, change to L and M today. L and M, mmm, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L and M today. Relax with L and M, so good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Jo-